So um, to start, we need to really understand that climate change is worsening in the region. Um, it's going to impact almost every country in the region. Uh, it's expected that the MENA region will be probably one of the most impacted uh, regions on Earth in terms of worsening climate conditions. But that impact is not going to be equal on every country. Countries, for example, like Iraq, is probably going to be more vulnerable to climate worsening climate conditions. Meanwhile, countries with stronger state capacity, stronger institutional capacity can be better prepared to adjust its economic and political system. When it comes to the U.S. specifically, um, especially in relation to Iraq, really, um, the target needs to be these vulnerable states, these states that are less likely to withstand changes in the climate and um, are more likely to experience economic and political instability. So one way um, Iraq can be helped um, and that will have an impact on the rest of the region is really um, if the U.S. can help in terms of negotiation between Iraq and Turkey and to creating environments and spaces where these negotiations can happen. One of the issues really facing Iraq is a question of droughts. Um, and it's because of increasing temperature and all of that, the droughts are becoming worse, but also because Turkey is cutting water supplies um, for a lot of, uh, you know, um, the, the both of the rivers are coming down to Iraq. It's also impacting Iran as well. So it's not only Turkey, not only Iraq that's being impacted by this. And so because of the trade relationship between Turkey and between Iraq and because of the weak state capacity that Iraq is experiencing, Iraq really doesn't have a lot to negotiate with or to impact Turkey's policy on water share. So that will eventually manifest to even more severe droughts in Iraq and more economic and political instability. And the U.S. can play a really significant role in creating and um, you know, providing a space where geopolitical negotiations around climate issues can happen uh, between different na neighboring countries, specifically those with limited cap say capacity. We are still very much behind in terms of, you know, actually seeing collaborations happening. Um, you know, the good thing is that, for example, COP27 is happening right now in Egypt as we speak, and COP28 is also going to happen in the region. Um, and so these are the first times where we're seeing climate conversations are happening on this scale, on a very large scale within the region, which hopefully will center the interests of the region and the people within the region in the conversation. Oftentimes, um, you know, you have the big powers having conversations and setting expectations that are not always uh, a lot of these countries can meet because of their limited capacity. And so having these scope events happening in the Middle East is really positive. And we are also seeing in the case of Egypt, for example, a lot of political activists are really mobilizing around COP27, um, not only to bring attention to so, uh, climate change issues, but also to connect that to political injustices and oppression uh, committed by the regime. And so we are seeing more understanding by the population and by the civic society and political activists in terms of connecting climate change to other issues like political and economic inequalities. And frankly, we are very far behind, but one of the good things is that this COP27 event happening, it really bringing the climate change conversation a little bit to the forefront in terms of activism and also for political leaders and state actors to kind of understand that relationship between economic justice and political and economic justice. Mm -hmm.